Hey, how's it going? Kenny here and welcome back to Non-League to Giants. And up in today's episode, we have two tricky away matches against Sheffield Wednesday and Rotherham. And the good news is, coming into the episode, we are still sitting top of the league, joint top with Charlton, though. We're only on top of the league due to our goal difference. Um, been too many draws, though. I shouldn't complain too much because we are top of the league, which, is, of course, is very, very nice. But... Six wins, four draws this season, no losses. So we are top of the league, but just a loss uh, in the first game of Wednesday here could see us drop down to fourth place. So it's not a very healthy top um, top of the league, but we are still unbeaten. I am still unbeaten as Portsmouth manager, as it stands. We lost to Watford in the uh, in the Carabao Cup there, but that was on penalties. So in terms of 90 minutes, we're still yet to lose a game, which is very nice. Two tricky games today, though. Chef Wednesday away first. They're having a terrible season so far, though, down in 20th place. So we've got to fancy our chances in the first game. Yes, they're a massive club at this level. And, um, you yeah, know, one of the favourites of playoffs. But 20th in the league. We're top of the league. We shouldn't really fear Chef Wednesday at all. Rotherham, though, uh, different uh, different opposition. They're sitting 7th in the league currently. Only four points behind us. Yes, they've played the game more than us. But, of course, that is the uh, the most trickiest game of the, uh, of the episode, you'd say. Uh, looking at the season preview here. Rotherham are where are they? Fourteenth to uh fourteenth favourite to get promoted as champions and Chef Wednesday are ninth. So according to the season preview, according to the media prediction, Chef Wednesday have a better squad, but Rotherham are clearly doing the better of the two as it stands. So is it being an iffy one? All I know is that both of the games are quite tricky. So in terms of the recent results, so we're still on beta, which is great, but too many draws, my liking. We drew at home to Huddersfield 1-1 in the next game after the episode. Disappointing uh, performance, has to be said. Huddersfield were by far the better team in the game, especially in the first half. Uh, towards the second half, we came into the game a little bit more, but if any team deserved to win, it was Huddersfield. So we stats a draw in this game. Ricky J. Jones with his first goal for the club, which was nice. Uh, got a draw there against Huddersfield. Obviously a good team at this level, but terrible performance, really. We beat Salford in the next game, though. Beat them 3 0 away from home, which was nice. Ken Abbo with a hat trick in this game. We'll get into him in more detail in a second. We then beat Cambridge 1 0 at home. Abbo again with a goal there. We then drew our second game after that up episode there. 0 0 away to Wickham, which was disappointing. We beat Northampton 2 1 away from home, though. We then beat Tottenham under 21s 3 0 at home in the Papa John's Trophy. Oh, I'm we two goals there. Hector with a goal as well. So we're qualified from the Papa John's Trophy group already. Got to play Cambridge at home in the third game, but it was, we should get um, we should get we should qualify. Sorry, from the group nonetheless. Although Charlton and um, Cambridge are both League One teams, obviously Tottenham under 21s are an under 21 team. Uh, we're still uh, the strongest team in the group, I'd say, along with Charlton. We beat them three 0 away, so not too many surprises there. And just for the episode, another disappointing draw. This time at home to Lincoln, we drew the game 0-0. So, too many draws for my liking. I'd like to see some better performances. Our next three league games, actually, are very tricky. Away to Sheffield Wednesday, away to Rotherham, and away to Charlton. So, we'll do very well to get three wins out of three there. If we can get two wins out of the next three away games, I'll be ecstatic with that, to be honest. So, very, very tricky. You can't really be drawn at home to teams such as Lincoln. Uh, Huddersfield, you know, yeah, they're a good team. But a home, home advantage, away to Wicker, away to Port Vale, 0-0 as well. Disappointing teams to draw against. Uh, Huddersfield are the best team out of the, out of the four there, but Wickham, Lincoln at home, and Port Vale drawing three of those games all nil-nil is disappointing. Um, in terms of Dover, my former team Dover, well, of course, they're in League One. Um, they're sitting 20 seconds at the stand, so as it stands, they're in the relegation zone. They're only two points off 20th place for Wednesday, though, and of course, there's a long way to go yet. Uh, if My personal opinion, I probably think they'll get relegated. Um, just don't think they're cut out for League One. I'll probably keep up while I'm staying in charge of them, but it's time for me to move on and uh, be a bit selfish, has to be said. At least Dover aren't Northampton, though. Played 10, lost 10. That is pretty terrible, isn't it? So Dover, there's still hope for Dover. They're not like um, like Northampton, as I said. Northampton, no, they're guaranteed relegation, it seems. But Dover, there's some sort of chance there for them. They've won two games already in the season. They beat Fleetwood and Cambridge, both at home. So maybe... If the Crabble Athletic Ground can be a fortress this season, then Dover certainly have a chance. Well, in terms of the squad, um, Abbo, I mentioned Abbo. He's a very, very hit and miss player. Very hit and miss player. He's got seven goals in six starts, but he's got two hat tricks. So it's, it's, it's not as great as it, as it first seems, to be honest. He's got a hat trick against Charlton in his first game, actually, in that last episode there in the Papa John's Trophy. He then didn't score against Huddersfield. He got a 6.2 in that game. Uh, he then got another hat-trick against Salford. 
He then got a goal against Cambridge. And in the last three games, he's got a 6.3, a 6.5, and a 6.4. So he is a very, very inconsistent striker. Uh, I noticed when he plays against three centre-backs, which maybe makes sense, to be honest. He's one striker by himself against three centre-backs. He puts in terrible performances, like 6.2 there, 6.3, 6.5, 6.4. Not all against three at the back, but uh, when he has come against three at the back, he has uh, really, really struggled. So that's certainly something I need to look at going forward. But... He has scored two hat-tricks, so he's definitely got class about him. Both away from home as well, which is very interesting. Cambridge, he scored at home, yeah. So he's only scored one goal in our uh, in Fratton Park, and the other two hat-tricks were away from home, which is very interesting. But yeah, he's very, very inconsistent, but as it stands, he looks like a good player. He's still averaging over a goal a game, so can't complain too much. Uh... Michael Hector, he's been decent when he's coming as well, to be fair. Good squad player. Morgan Fox as well, three assists there. Um, other than Ken Abbo, though, there's not really any standout performance of the season. There's lots of good performances, as you can see. Peacock Farrell has been a uh, consistent goalkeeper. Had one poor game, I believe. Rakeem Harper's had a good season as well. Jay Jones, only two goals, but some consistent performances as well. So, all in all, the team's performing quite well. Uh, but Abbo certainly is a standout player, but he's inconsistent. So, I'm hoping the season will get better from here, if it can get better. We're top of the league currently, and uh, we get a lot better performances. Anyway, let's get to the first game. We're waiting for Wednesday. Um... I was going to say, will I take a draw in this game? They're a good club, you know, high, uh, high prediction from the media, but they're 20th in the league, so I can't really accept a draw in this game, can I? I've got to go for the win here. And in terms of the team sheet, got Peacock, Farrell and goal. Rafferty starts right back today. Fox is left back. We've got Raggett and Mascara centre-backs. We've got Ibrahim, Balassa and Harper midfield. Obafemi on the right, Jones on the left and Abbo up front. There's a few players in the squad that I forgot to mention in the last episode there, but they're not really worth mentioning. They're all... Um, Bit part players, players I want to get rid of, but I'll go from anyway. I introduced most of the squad in the last episode. There were a few players to introduce, such as Choi Kyung Rook, who's a player I'm trying to sell uh, for £2 million as well, which is absolutely massive at this level. Uh, I did agree to sell him for £1.8 million to a few South Korean teams, but the board demand that we have to get at least £2 million for him, which is ridiculous, to get £1.8 million for a player like him, who's absolutely useless, by the way. Look at his graph here. He's terrible. He is terrible. No interest in him whatsoever. He's very versatile, but he's just nowhere near good enough. My assistant manager rates him as three and a half stars, but I massively disagree with that. Massively disagree. They actually signed him from Karlsruhe in Germany in 2025 season. Um, so he starts off in Germany. He plays a lot of his career in Germany. He plays his whole career in Germany. So uh, Germany, Bundesliga 2 mainly. He's just not a very good player. And to get 1.8 million for a player who is uh, way down the pecking order is absolutely massive at this level. But unfortunately, the board won't allow it. So he's one of them. Another player is Jay Mingi. Um... Yeah, he's no more than a well, he's no one of the fringe player. He's like third choice ball midfielder. He's not terrible, but he you know, he's better than him at this level. Mentally he's not very good as you can see there. Four determination is disgusting. Also got Zach Swanson. He's featured quite a lot, to be fair. And uh, the only good thing about him, the only good thing about him, he is very, very versatile. As you can see here, he pretty much can play anywhere apart from a striker as an attack or attacker midfielder. DM's in the orange there, but it could easy, quite easily be trained there. So that is one positive about Swanson, but he's just not very good. And primarily, he's a right back, uh, but he just cannot defend. So, yeah, he's way down the pecking order as well. But he's here as well. Also got Marlon Pack, who uh, he might have been a good player at some point, but now he's just too old and his physicals are really really going downhill 10 natural fitness don't help with that so yeah he's not of no use to me whatsoever really he's more of use to a team who play a controlled possession style that's what he suits we have no physical and speed about him i'm just knowing not interested in him at all uh, i've also got one more player and that is cole stockton he is our third choice striker um He's not too bad, but I'd say he is a, a lower lower league one standard player, high league two standard player. If he was uh, if it were Dover, for example, he would be a great striker to have. But here with Portsmouth, you know, he's just not great. Third choice striker. He made an appearance on the bench. He uh, made a couple of appearances in the cup as well. But they're the bit part players I didn't really mention in the last episode. Also, one thing I forgot to mention as well is the tactic. The reason I forgot to mention the tactic is because uh, there's not much to mention, to be honest. Uh, those of you who've watched uh, the Dover uh, section of this non-league to Giants, you would, uh, you'd you'd know that at the start of the series here, uh, I started off with, I can't remember what, fluid counter-attack I think it was. Uh, but things weren't working my way. I was changing things all the time. I decided to go back to basics and just set up a tactic with hardly any instructions whatsoever. And that's how we played effectively for the next two and a, two and two thirds of the season. And uh, you saw what happened. We came top, top, and top again with three back-to-back -back promotions. I'm doing a similar thing here with uh, with Portsmouth. As you can see, I named the tactic Pompey. Uh, it's very, very similar to the Dover tactic I had. 4-3-3 uh, formation. Uh, but the only difference is really, I've got it to counter-press 
and they've got a mid block on there instead of low block. Just a little bit more positive than the Dover tactic, uh, but not very positive at all, to be honest. And um, one thing I've noticed in games this season is that I've, I've gone positive quite early on and uh, pressing higher up the pitch. So that is something I'm looking at going forward. That might change for the next episode. We shall see. That actually might set the tactic up to be a bit, bit more positive than it is now. But in terms of the tactic, not much to talk of. Not many instructions at all. But anyway, enough babbling from me. Let's get to the first game. It's a trip to Hillsborough to face Sheffield Wednesday. Can we win this one? Well, let's find out. Before we get started with the first game, guys, please remember that if you like this video, to that like button for me. It's really important to grow the video and also to help me out here with the channel. And also, if you're new around here, do hit that subscribe button as well. It would really help me out as well and even much appreciate. So let's get started with this game. Then away to Sheffield Wednesday. As I said, they're a massive club at this level. Really, really massive club. Probably the biggest club at this level, to be honest. Or well, certainly one of, the top, one of the top three or so. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a tricky game in terms of you know, the size of the two clubs. Portsmouth are no mugs though, by the way. They've won the league title a couple of times, the Premier Division. I saw that back-to-back -back in the 50s, I think it was. So, they're no mugs, but Sheffield Wednesday are clearly a massive club. So, it's going to be tricky, but they're 20th. We're top of the league, so we should be comfortable here. Anyway, we got a highlight straight from kickoff. We're going to score, of course. Abbo, I can't even speak. We have, we scored straight from kickoff. There's not offside or anything. Okay, what a, what a lovely start to the match. Get in there. Actually, he didn't pull off his uh, his first chance there, his first um, pass, Harper. But his second pass, he did pull off. And Abbo, he loves an away day, doesn't he? It's now scored seven of his eight goals away from home. And uh, what a lovely start to this match. What was that, 20 seconds? Well, the first 20 seconds were good from us. But apart from that, not much has happened. That was our only shot in the match so far. Finally had another one. It's been a very dull game. Oh, look at that. We've got an injury. Morgan Fox, with an injury. he's been a really good left back for us, has to be said. And also, I haven't put Ogilvy on the bench. Um, we've got Ferguson on the bench, though. He's not quite fully fit. As I said, he is the guy who was injured for about two and a half years. So I'm not trying to overdo him, but uh, this is a, a drastic time, has to be said. So he has to come on here. Well, Ferguson is right foot and prominent, primarily a right back, but he has got a fairly strong left foot. So I'm going to keep him on fullback support, not worry about changing to inverted wing back. Look at it, he's already gone half fit, just coming on the pitch. So, um, yeah, that is very, very dangerous play, especially for a player who's uh, he's been injured for two and a half years. That's quite a silly mistake, actually. I should have put Ogilvy on the bench instead of Ferguson, shouldn't I? That is stupid. Anyway, let's just fingers crossed that he doesn't pick up, pick up an injury. Hopefully not. Because when he does pick up an injury, he picks up an injury. He's out for a long time, so let's hope that doesn't happen. Anyway, at half time, nothing has happened in the game, basically. Nothing until we had the highlight from kickoff where we scored, and, um, and Morgan Fox were injured, of course. Apart from that, nothing else has happened in the game. We've dominated the game. I've given the match momentum here. We are dominating the game, but we need a second goal here. Will it come here? Balassa with a free kick. Abbo's there. Oh. Well, he's got seven of his eight goals away from home now. When he has scored the previous six, he went on to get a hat trick, so is that a sign of things to come? Back on the highlight again. 30 minutes to go. Getting a bit nervous now. The way we've dominated the game. We haven't created too many chances, but we've been in control the entire game. We should really have got a second goal by now, shouldn't we? And Raggett heads it, heads it straight to Doty. Oh, no. Clear it, boys. Clear it. What are you doing? Anyway, kick the ball. Here's Balassa. Back to Rafferty, which is a bizarre one there. But anyway, he's got acres of space here. Can't drive forward with the ball, Rafferty. He's a moaning myrtle, but he's an all right player. Here's Harper to Balassa to Rafferty. Keeping the ball for a long time here. Not really what we're known for. Never give it away when I say that. But anyway, Balassa gets it back. Abbo for a second goal. Get in there. He loves an away day. I told you he loves an away day. Get in there. This boy is just either a hat trick or nothing. Well, he's only got two goals in this game, but let's hope he gets a hat trick. Really nice. Get in there. Second goal in the game. He really needed that second goal. Really, really did. And, um, we did, could score at home to Lincoln in the last game. But we've got two here today. Abbo with both the goals as well. Get in. Well, it's time for a couple of changes here, I think. And the, the wingers have been poor. To, to be honest, I'm not really getting on with any of the wingers. Uh, apart from Ricky J. Jones, he's been the one who's been um, the best winger so far this season. He had a poor game today, though. But apart from today, he's been pretty good, to uh, tell you the truth. But Obafemi, uh, Popov, uh, Barry as well. They've all been a bit inconsistent, has to be said. But still showing their, their signs of something. But anyway, let's bring on let's bring on Popoff or Obafemi. He's left footed, to put an inverted winger. And then we'll take Jay Jones. Always had a poor game on a yellow card, so we'll take him off as well and bring on Louis Barry. Louis Barry hasn't really shown anything so far. He's uh he doesn't look very good in this FM. He looked better on the last FM. Saying that though, I think Aston Villa have uh, have ruined him a little bit by not playing him at all in the uh, virtual universe here. Anyway, back on our highlight here. As long as it rains two 0 
We are in a comfortable position. Let's not concede a goal. A third goal will be even better. Can Abo get his third hat-trick of the season? All the way from home? Here's Popov. Running with the ball for ages there. Popov. Bit underwhelming so far this season, but he's definitely got some promise about him. And he's still young. Still 20 years of age, of course. So, still a good player. Anyway, I'm going to make one more change here. Ibrahim's turned out to be quite a surprising good loan signing, by the way. He's done that really well, actually. Him and Hector. Hector's not on loan, but he's been very good as well. Um, final change of the game. I've got two changes to make still, but I always leave a, a change spare in case an injury happens or something like that. You know, Ibrahim's had a good game. He's on a yellow card. Don't want him sent off, so we take him off, bring Hector on for the last 15 minutes or so. Oh, we're firmly in control of this game. Nothing stupid here. Can't see the late goal, because it'll be a very, very nervy ending. It feels like really well today. Harper and Balassa. Balassa's been underwhelming this season, but he's starting to show something what he's capable of in the last few games. Especially today as well. Anyway, Hector with a nice bit of cover in there. Harper kicks it on to pop off. Third goal just kills him off completely. They get the ball back. Here's Fami Famiwo. Famiwo? To Brennan. There is Iolfa. Oh, I don't concede now. Yeah, Mascara. Nice, nice. He's been good. Mascara's been decent. Decent, not not amazing. Same with Abbott as well. Oh, my word. What are you doing? There? What are you doing? Oh, well, they're all over the place. Here's Bowie. Well, we dodged a bullet there. We dodged a massive bullet there. Peacock, Farrell, what's he doing? And Raggett gives the ball away, but we we survived that scare, so it's fine. It's absolutely fine. Yeah, Mascara has been a little bit under. He hasn't been underwhelming. He's just been he's just been average basically. He's uh, he's worked. He's worked, but hopefully he gets better. Same with Abbott as well. Hopefully he get better. None of them really made that uh, set that partnership their own with Raggett there. So hopefully they get better. Anyway, here's Harper. Oh, I thought Barry's gonna get through there. Anyway, Abbo on a hat trick, of course. Hector gets it back. Look at Hector. Abbo. Oh, looks like Abbo's not gonna get his hat trick this time round, but. Eight goals away from home this season out of nine is sensational. What a record that is. Anyway, here's Raft. We're still looking for a third goal here. I think it's safe to say the game is over, barring something that crazy going on here. But a third goal really does put it to bed. Abbo for his hat trick. He gets another hat trick. Get in there. What up is going on? What a player. What a. That's three hat tricks all the way from home now. Every time he scores away from home, he gets a hat trick. This is, rid this is a ridiculous record. Oh, my word. Just after I say he's probably going to get his hat trick as well. That's crazy. What a record that is. I uh, hope it continues for the rest of the season. That would be very nice. Another hat trick for the boy. What a player he is. Inconsistent, but what a player. He's still young. He's still he's still only 20 years of age. So, expect some inconsistency. When he uh, turns up, though, he turns up. Oh, my word. Look at Balassa giving him the, uh, giving the shot. It's got to be four. Pop off. Oh, what a waste. What a waste. That would be nice to get a fourth goal there. Getting some confidence as well. But, unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be. But what a win this is. 3-0 away to, uh, well, League One's biggest club, or at least one of the biggest clubs. Look at Peacock Farrell preventing a consolation goal there as well. That was a nice save. Is that it? That's it, ref. Get in. Get in. What a lovely win that is. Brilliant performance. Ken Abbo with another away day hat-trick. What, uh, what a surprise that is. Get in there. Three different assist makers as well. Harper, Balassa, and Popov. Get in there. Just a solid performance that, wasn't it? It was nothing sensational. Uh, we dominated the entirety of the game. Abbo took his chances when he needed to. And we've run out of comfortable 3-0 winners away to another big team this season. Of course, we beat Charlton 3-0 away in the last episode. That was in the Papa John's Trophy, though. We beat Barnsley 4-1 away. We now beat Chef Wednesday 3-0 away as well. So, things are going really well. We're now three points clear at the top over Charlton, but they've got a game in hand. Oxford have got a game in hand as well. They're five points behind. But we've uh, produced a little bit of a gap here between us and the, uh, the chasing pack, has to be said. Just Charlton and Oxford breathing down our necks. Well, unfortunately, Fox is out for two to three weeks with a pulled calf muscle. Not a disaster, though. I would say he's a key player. Got Ogilvy can play left back, who's just as good, really. So, not a complete disaster, that. Uh, in terms of the next game, guys, got Rotherham away, cut up next in just four days' time. They're another big team. Can we get two wins out of two in the episode? We'll find out in a sec. Okay, here we are. It's time for the second tricky match of the episode. We've done quite well in the first one. Beach of Wednesday 3 0, of course. Abo hat trick again. What a player. He's looking like a great replacement for Surridge, isn't he? Looking like a top, top player. Uh, now, Rotherham away from home. They're sitting ninth in the league. So, got a fancy our chances to get a win here as well. We're seven points clear of them, and we've got a game in hand. So, got a fancy our chances. They've got to be favourites for the game, but of course, they have a. Uh, 
a dangerous team, it has to be said, Rotherham. Uh, also, unfortunately, since the last episode, or well, since the last game, sorry, uh, Chef Wednesday, they just sacked their manager, Kenny Jacket, after beating them 3-0. My namesake, Kenny. So, uh, that's a bit sad, but ultimately, not my problem. That's his problem. Also, if we go unbeaten in this game, already into my early tenure here with Portsmouth, there'll be a record broker because we go unbeaten in this game. We'll be 16 matches unbeaten in a row, which will break the record, which is 15 matches without losing. That is Portsmouth record. That is crazy. 15 matches without uh, losing in their entire history, dating all the way back to 1921. That is that's crazy how uh, they have never gone more unbeaten than 15 games in the entire well, in the entire of their history, which is uh, very bizarre. I said they won the league title, the Premier Division, 1949 and 1950. You'd think they'd have gone at least more than 15 games unbeaten in one of those title winning runs. Also, they won the championship, of course. They won League One three times, uh, League Two once as well, but they've never gone unbeaten for more than 15 games. So hopefully, we can end that today. If we do, already a record's breaking. Uh, broken and uh, and counting, so that'd be very very nice. Also, Charlton won their game in that game week, so they're only uh, level on points of us still as well. Also, they had another player with a hat trick as well, Freddie Ladapo. So, Abo and Ladapo both with a hat trick on that game week. We are still top though with better goal difference. Let's get to this game then. Just two uh, two changes from that game at Sheffield Wednesday. Now it's Ogilvy comes in at left back, of course, for the uh, injured Morgan Fox. We went off injured in that last game. Also, pop off. He came off the bench to get an assist there against. Um, Except for Wednesday, so he starts the day in place of Obafemi. So rob him away from home. Can we make it two out of two in the episode? Well, let's find out. All right, here we go. I've asked them to pick up where they left off in that last game. Hopefully, well, they didn't score after 20 seconds of this game, which is also that's a new record as well, a new club record. Kenabo with the quickest goal ever for the club. So two records broken in one episode. That's very nice. That doesn't usually happen. Anyway, 20 minutes into this game, it's been absolutely dreadful dreadful not a shot on target in the match yet we've just had a shot they've had one shot in the game as well 0.03 xg versus 0.09 that is absolutely pathetic we are preventing them creating any chances but we are not creating any chances ourselves so something needs to change here well as i mentioned in the uh, at the start of the episode there a lot of games are going more positive um halfway through the first half just because i can't see anything happening i've just done that just now as well yes we are um preventing rob from creating any chances but we've got to take our own initiative here we are the, the, the um the league, uh, league leaders as it stands. So we need to uh, take some initiative here. I've got more positive. It could backfire on me. We are away from home, but we are the better team here. So high press, positive uh, style, higher tempo as well. Let's see if we can get the uh, the first goal in the game here. Well, as soon as I did that, the game's livened up a little bit. The game's opened up a little bit. So it could be a good or bad thing. We shall see. If we score from this uh, highlight here, it's definitely a good thing. Anyway, look for Abbo. He loves an away day. Here's Hutchinson. To Bramall. Now his wing to Smith. Well, Mascara gets there just before Sunsup Bell, the uh, the Chelsea youngster, of course. Here's Popov starting today to Rafferty. Here's Harper. Oh. Here's Sunsup Bell to Musqui. He's offside, surely. Surely he must be offside. Yeah, he's offside. Whew. Thank goodness for that. Well, at half-time, it's been a very dull game so far. According to the match momentum, we are slightly edging it, but... Yeah, three shots apiece. We had one shot on target, they had none. It's been a terrible game so far. I'm going to stick with what I've changed to, though. Staying positive. Uh, hopefully, we can just uh, get the first chance of the game and take it. We shall see. But it's been a very boring game so far, and uh, looking like a nil-nil written all over it. Hopefully, the second half can change, though. We shall see. Anyway, we draw this game. Went to Rotherham. Beach off Wednesday, 3 nil away. I'll be happy with that. Out of the episode, four points. Two tricky away games, so we'll see what happens here. Anyway, here's Rathbone. Abbo gets the ball off him, though. Here's Harper. Out to Popov. He's very wide now. Someone running the box. Abbo. Abbo. Oh. Said he loves an away day. Seems like it's a bit late for him to get another hat trick in this game. As I said, he's got nine goals out of ten now. And all of them away from home. All of them have been three hat tricks. So that's pretty crazy. Anyway, got a corner here. Obviously, that run's going to end at some point. If he scores a goal here, we get the win 1 0. Then I don't care if the, uh, if the run ends. But. If we stay on beating for the rest of the game as well, we will break that new uh, new club record already. Which is the first 16 games already a club record broken, which is fantastic. Anyway, Harper with a slight injury here. Well, there have been some much worse performances in today's game, that is for sure. Ibrahim, 6.3. He's been terrible. Let's get him off. Bring Hector on. Harper as well. He's injured. Take him off. We'll bring on bring on Morel for him. Also, I brought Obafemi for Abbo as well. Put him as an advance forward as well. Uh, Abbo's one of the greatest of games today. Can Obafemi unlock that defence? We shall see. Anyway, final change of the game here. Um, you know, I'm going to bring on Ferguson. Bring him on for Rafferty. 
for the last 20 minutes or so. But a very dull game though, this one. Very, very dull. I'd say we're slightly edging the game in terms of chances created, but not much in it at all, to be honest. If we can get a late winner though here, I'll be ecstatic. Here's Rathbone. If we lose the game later on though, I'll be devastated. Here's Washington. Back to Bramall. Here's Hutchinson. Nothing really changed too much after I went positive and started pressing higher at the pitch. Not really create anything. It's just balancing each other out in this game, it seems. Saying that, though, here come Rotherham with a rare attack. But that's easy. Easy for Peacock Farrell to deal with. Nothing to worry about there. Will he give the ball away here, though, or will he start off a counter-attack? Lovely ball to Balassa. Here's Ferguson. Come on, this could be promising, boys. Here's Popov. He's done well. Lovely pass. Jay Jones. Oh, but Famey. What a touch. Oh, he wasted with the finish. Poor finish. If that was Abbo, would he have scored? Probably. But would he have got in that position with that lovely touch? I don't know. Oh, but Famey, that was almost a brilliant goal there. But terrible finish. Oh, no. Oh. Peacock Fowler has proved to be quite a good shot stopper, it has to be said. He's done really well in goal for us. They got a corner out of it, though. Bramall to take it. Hopefully that just... Let's not lose the game now. If we're not going to win. Let's not lose. Because that would be devastating. Bramall is taking ages here. I don't know what he's doing. It seems to be time wasting, but they're at home here. Why are they time wasting? Oh, back on the highlight. Four minutes to go. I've added time. Is there going to be a late, late winner here? Hector, get there first. He does. He passes it back to Mascara. Don't get the ball away here. All right, nice. Raggett. Can we build up attack? Here's Balassa. Back to Raggett. Now here's Ferguson. Come on, boys. Poor pass. What are you... Oh, you idiot. Oh, no. He's not... Well, that's going to guarantee you a red card there. But anyway, Ferguson's get the ball away. At the moment, there's no danger. Can we win the ball back? We do. Here's Balassa. Oh, but Famey! I can't believe what I just witnessed there. Oh, why did I take Abba off and bring him on? Oh, my. What a terrible finisher of the ball. What on earth was that? He calls himself a striker. What on earth was that? He's got 13 finishing. That was like one finishing to me. That was absolutely... What was that? What was that? What on earth was that? I thought I was it. I thought I was to be the winner there. That, that, was, that wasn't just bad. That was absolutely... It was a mile wide. High and wide. What on earth? Oh, my God. Well, we'll just move on. We'll move on. We'll move on. Um, <laughs> that should be the winner right now. That is your striker. One, well, your second best striker at the club. Through one on one in the 90th minute, he does that. That's not your centre back. Well, your goalkeeper. That's your striker. Oh, my, I can't believe that. I can't believe that. I'm going to say you're unlucky. They were pretty unlucky. That was ridiculous. Wow. Okay. Well, hopefully, Oba Fame can make it up to me in the uh, in the coming games. We're off the top now, though, because Charlton have just beat my beloved Dover 3 0 away from home. Colby Bishop as well, our former player, sold him to Charlton this season. So that's not very nice, but. Doesn't really matter too much. We're two points behind Charlton. Long way to go yet, of course. 34 more games to go. We've broken the uh, club record, though, now. 16 matches unbeaten and counting. Too many draws, though. Too many nil-nil draws as well. Four of the five draws have been nil-nil, so certainly got to work on that. That should be the one-nil win, though, shouldn't it? Obafemi should have scored that goal. That was ridiculous. Anyway, we'll move on. And in terms of the next episode, talking of my beloved Dover, I'm going to face them for the first of a time in the next episode there, so make sure you don't miss that one. A home to Dover. And a home to MK Dons. Two games he really should be winning, let's be honest. Um, got a lot of games to play before then, though. November's going to be very, very busy for us. Uh, lots of home games, though, which is nice to see. And, of course, in the next episode, two home games. A home to Dover and a home to MK Dons. And thank you guys for watching this video. Please remember, if you like the video, to that like button for me. And also, if you're new around here, hit that subscribe button as well. It really help me out. And be much appreciate as well. Thanks again for watching. And I'll see you for the next one.